So, <laughs> it would appear that I have been uh, featured in Vice Magazine. Okay, it would appear that I've been featured in Vice. And this is a we this is a surreal moment for me because I always saw Vice as a news organization that likes to interview people that are like criminals or who like stole something from North Korea or like clown circus puppeteers. Ringmasters, <laughs> ringleaders. <laughs> That's how I always viewed it, right? Uh, so, for me, I feel like being on the front page of Vice, that's how you know you fucked up, okay? You've uh, <laughs> been like questioning all the choices that have led me to this point. I'm a bun on the run. Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't read this. Uh, let's see what it has to say. Top Final Fantasy XIV streamer will flee Ukraine with cameras rolling. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes. One of the most popular Final Fantasy XIV content creators is making plans to flee her home in Kiev, Ukraine, ahead of a potential Russian invasion. Zeppelin is a bunny ear wearing content creator. Wearing? Those are my real ears, man. Well, I don't, I don't call you a human ear wearing journalist, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> For the critically acclaimed MMO FXAV with a free trial that goes up to level 16 and includes the expansion Heaven's Word. Every single YouTube video she cuts together begins with a warm smile and a friendly Hey Buns. Time to flee the war. In a recent video, <laughs> she began a different way by telling her fans and community that she may have to flee the country soon. I caught up with her on Discord. A few days ago after she posted the video explaining the situation. I am next level stressed at the moment. Man, I'm saying next level way too much. I need to stop. <laughs> I'm starting to sound like Oh my god. <laughs> it's like, this situation is not very poggers. It's a very surreal feeling here in Kiev. I'm a little sad about Russia thinking about invading my home. Because a lot of people I know are making plans to leave, to evacuate, or plans to stay, and potentially fight. That's true. Zeppel said it's odd to walk around Kiev right now. She's been in Ukraine for about eight years, but she grew up in Louisiana and compared the feeling to the moments before a hurricane hits. Everybody's preparing. You gotta decide if you're gonna ride it out or not, if you're gonna hit the road. But it's weirder than that. And it's worse than that. At least in a hurricane, you can see the dark clouds overhead. You know something is coming. It's obvious. You can feel it in the wind. You can feel it in the air. That the rain is coming in. You can see the lightning on the horizon. You can see Ramu out there. But here, Ramu hasn't even been summoned and everybody's freaked out. It's still beautiful sunny days. It's still everyone going about their business as usual. You can't hear the boss music playing yet. I don't hear any boss music, and yet everybody is worried. I don't understand. You'll be at a restaurant, and you'll hear people talking among themselves about their plans to leave or stay and fight, and yet there's a normalcy around everything. That's the most unsettling thing about it. Yeah, I mean, if the music hasn't changed, how can I know that this is different? She said it didn't feel quite real. I'm looking around at this city, and I wonder if the next time I see it, it'll be completely different. Will the buildings I see her now still be there when I come back? What kind of damage can I return to? It almost feels like a fantasy, a final fantasy, you could say. It can happen when everything seems so normal now, but we have to prepare. Our family back in America is exacerbating that stress. My parents are begging me to leave now. Now, this is completely true. Um, my parents are losing their minds. Uh, my dad 
actually, <laughs> is this true? Hold on. Hold on. Uh, my dad sent me this gif. And said, don't let this be you. That's completely true. <laughs> I hate to laugh about this. Right now, laughter is all I got. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's funny. You can't say that's not funny. <laughs> okay. He's just trying to get through to me in the only language I understand, which is memes. Uh, but I, I mean, I do plan on leaving. I will leave when I can. <laughs> They're absolutely losing their minds. They're panicking. And obviously that makes me panic too because I want them to calm down, but I actually can't leave right now. I can't leave right yet. That's true. What is holding Zeppelin back? She's an American citizen and could technically leave when she wanted to, but she has a life in Kiev. She has a home. And more importantly, she has a cat and a dog that she doesn't want to leave behind. Actually, right now that's especially true because my cat is sick right now. My cat has an extremely high fever. She's had a fever for two days. I've been taking her to the vet. Took her to the vet this morning. The vet gave her some uh, shots and gave her some medicines, some antibiotics. And the vet was like, come back in two days if she's still sick. I can't take her on a 36 hour car ride when she is not feeling well. I'm not gonna do that to her. Like we gotta wait at least for her to get better, but that's, it doesn't even matter because I still have to get all the pet passports. There's so much shit I still have to do. So um, there's that. Getting animals out of Ukraine is trickly. Trickly? <laughs> it's tricky and trickly uh, because actually, yeah, the CDC does not allow the transport of pets uh, from Ukraine to US right now because Ukraine is considered a high risk rabies country. I don't know if leaving my pets with a sitter would be the safest thing for them either. I don't want to leave them behind in what could potentially be a war zone. I don't know when I would be able to get back to them again. What if the person watching them wants to evacuate as well? It's too many question marks. Yeah, it's that's completely true. That's completely true. Like, what if some real, real shit went down at the person that I took them to? Uh, at their house and then they had to get out and like it's just the uncertainty is concerning. Zeppa said she should get pet passports for her animals this week. After that I will go. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Zeppa moved to Ukraine in 2014 at the tail end of the Maidan revolution, the very moment Ukraine's current troubles with Russia began. In 2014, Ukrainians gathered in Maidan Square in Kiev to protest government corruption and demand a closer relationship with the European Union. Yeah, I was actually, that's when I decided would be a good idea to come here. That's, uh, but it was like, it was kind of over when I came here. It was pretty much over at that point. There was riot police. Uh, yeah, there was like, Riot police descended on the scene. Protests became street battles. There were snipers, flaming barrels, medieval battle tactics. In the end, the protesters overthrew the government and Yanukovych fled to Russia with the help of the Russian Special Operations Forces soldiers. Everybody was so happy about that. Everybody was so happy about that. Let me see if I can show you something here. Yeah, so you can actually, and I've, I've been here to the luxury mansion that Yanukovych had been living in, that he paid for uh, with money that he pretty much stole from everybody. So these are some pictures of the mansion where he was living. I've been here, I've seen it. It's like, you can actually go there, it's a tour now. It's pretty much like a park, you can walk around. And uh, man, it's sick. It's sick to see like how much he just stole from everybody. So obviously people were very, very happy that one of the uh, results of this Maidan revolution was that he was kicked out. He was kicked to the curb and good riddance, good riddance. So that was going on uh, whenever I came here. When I arrived in Kiev, there were still some barricades and burned out cars in the streets. People were really happy that he was gone for good reason, yeah. It was a pretty frightening situation, but I wasn't scared. My family on the other hand, well, the thing is when I came, it was already the end. Like, let me just be clear about that. There wasn't still snipers in the uh, Maidan Square. It was like, it was pretty much over, but the tents were still up. The barricades were still there. So everything hadn't been cleared away quite yet. My family on the other hand did not approve my decision to come. That's true, but it all worked out. I've been really happy here. Uh, I was teaching here English for a while. I was, 
doing um, creative writing work for a mobile game studio here, actually, as well, because I have a creative writing degree and I have some background in games. So uh, I was doing that until I started my YouTube channel and that this kind of took off and then decided to stay. Zeppelin wasn't streaming Final Fantasy 14 back then. She lived what she described as a freewheeling lifestyle. That is very true. <laughs> That is, that is pretty accurate. I didn't I didn't put a whole lot of thought into my decision to come here. I'll, I'll be honest about that. She'd been teaching English in Taiwan. She made friends with some Ukrainians, decided Ukraine sounded like a pretty cool place to live. I wanted to go teach in Ukraine. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, wherever the wind takes me is pretty much how I lived my life before I uh, settled down with the YouTube and everything. She started streaming two years into her stay and quickly gained an audience. She has more than 300,000 subscribers on her primary YouTube account and more than 200,000 bun buns on Twitch. That became my full-time job. So I didn't really have any reason to leave. I'm quite cozy here. Living in Kiev has been wonderful. It has, it's awesome. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna leave. I don't wanna go. It's like, it's nice. But, uh, anyway, we've seen them crack down on corruption. We've seen the town become more progressive. It seems like Ukraine was making positive steps in the right direction until Putin, until, I mean, he hasn't actually done anything yet, to be clear. We're still making progress. Nothing has happened. Let's not act like, let's not put the horse before the cart here. Nothing's happened yet. Ukraine will prosper. Zapla said that she loves Russian people and stressed that Ukraine and Russia have many connections. The problem she sees it is Putin. I definitely think he's threatened by Ukraine becoming a prosperous democracy, but people are free to choose their own destiny. Obviously, that is a direct threat to him because it could serve as an inspiring example to people in his own country who may also decide they'd like to move towards a democratic future. Oh my God, I hope he's not reading that. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> but uh, actually, uh, I told... The, the writer of this article is like, can you not turn me into a political target? <laughs> uh, whenever the political issues behind the war come up, Zeppelin de Merd. Look, I can't pretend like I'm some kind of geopolitical analyst. I try to be informed, but I also don't have any delusions about my credentials. I'm a FFXAV Twitch streamer that wears bunny ears on stream every day. Thank you so much for putting this in the article. Thank you, because this is what people need to remember, all right? Make up your own mind about the situation. And Zeppelin is keeping to that daily routine despite the looming threat of war. She streams three to four hours a day, five days a week. She also interacts with the community on Discord, cuts up YouTube videos, and is studying Japanese. I try to welcome the distractions. It's time I'm not thinking about the situation. As soon as the stream is over, I'm thinking about the situation again. Yeah, I'm like, at the, the stream is like, okay, thank you so much for watching everyone. I really appreciate you watching. It was really good hanging out today. Thank you for watching. Go to my YouTube and go check out the Discord. Okay, I'll talk to you later. I go click in stream and I'm just like, No, I mean, it's not that bad. <laughs> but, uh, back to the despair. Sabathon. The, I, yeah, what I need to do is just never stop streaming. Uh, I think that's probably what we're going to have to do. Uh, just make it so the stream is never over. <laughs> so she's hoping the pet passport's coming soon and that she can get out ahead of an invasion. Oh, this just reminds me of this, uh... Uh... About exercise, this meme. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, like, one of my... This is, like, how I see exercise, why I like to go to the gym. But it's kind of relevant in this situation, too. If I keep my body moving and my mind occupied at all times... I will avoid falling into a bottomless pit of despair. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I hope nothing happens for another week, she said. A lot of people here seem to think there will be an attack in the middle of February. That's what everyone's throwing around right now. So at the time of this interview, that's what everyone was throwing around. But now, uh, I think people are less worried than they were. 
I don't know if this, like, I haven't heard this more since I did the interview. Zeppelin went to a home in Kiev and doesn't want to leave it all behind. She talked about coming back, even if she has to jump through red tape to get back in Russia. Should Russia take Kiev? I just don't see that actually happening, she said. There's no way they're going to take Kiev. There's just, they don't have the, like, as of right now, they don't have the manpower for that. I don't think they're prepared for that level of long-term urban warfare. It would be catastrophic for them. I think they would probably do something really quick and try to get some security concessions out of the West. Maybe they'll take a chunk out of the East. Who knows? Zeppelo, like all... Wait, what? Like all Ukrainians. Okay, because I'm not... Uh, I I'm not Ukrainian. Just to, I, I feel like just grammatically that's a little unclear. I'm from America. Has been living with this for a long time. After the Maidan Revolution, Kremlin-backed separatists in the Donbass region of Ukraine along the Russian border began to take and hold territory. The war there has been going on for eight years. Zeppelo lived in Kharkiv, a town on the edge of the conflict for a year before coming to Kiev. That's true. Uh, that's where I was doing creative writing for that mobile games company, actually, it was in Kharkiv. Uh, I try to never forget what's happening or put it out of my mind, but I still need to get up and go to work, cook dinner, walk the dogs. Wait, I have one dog. <laughs> I think about it every second of every day. I'll lose my mind. She said one of her pet peeves is Western media talking about how Russia might invade Ukraine. She pointed to the war in Donbass. Russia invaded years ago. She also called out Western media for repeating the Kremlin's talking points. I've seen some right-wing American outlets repeating Russian propaganda verbatim, and that's extremely concerning to me. Yes. Yes, I have seen that, and it is extremely concerning to me. I asked her what she wanted Americans to know about the war. Again, I don't want to position myself as some kind of authority. I live in Kiev and play Final Fantasy on the internet. Please remember this. But... I think Ukraine deserves a chance at democracy. Ukraine deserves to determine its own future and destiny for itself. I hope people can remember that. Yeah. Zeppelin said that the Final Fantasy XIV community has been incredibly supportive, with friends, fans sending her messages and offering her places to stay. As she packs up her life in Kiev and journeys west, she says she'll keep doing her job. I plan to continue streaming as much as possible. I'll be stopping at Airbnbs and hotels, and I'll stream the whole way. She feels responsible for the audience she's built, her buns. I try to be my best self for them and show there's no need to panic. I have it under control. We're going to get through this together. Yes, we will. And this is what I really want to highlight for y'all today. I know a lot of y'all are extremely worried and panicking actually today and freaking out because uh, these articles are coming out today and uh, the situation is getting a lot of media attention. But um, the thing is that not every, okay, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Okay, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Um, not every single embassy has pulled out their staff yet, okay? Only a couple of different embassies here have done that. There's a lot of other ones that have not felt that the risk is that great at this particular moment to pull out their staff. Um, the There were several members of the families of people that uh, got pulled out from the American embassy that were quite upset that they had been forced to return to America. They felt like it was premature. Uh, the mayor here, I mean, the president here said that he also felt it was premature. And uh, I do think that there is still some time for uh, diplomacy to make some headway in this situation. If you look at the actual um, troops set up to around the border, like they have a lot of equipment in place, but they do not have the they do not have the military personnel to actually man all of this equipment, all these tanks and stuff. Like, they don't have the people there yet. They don't have the people there and the numbers that would be required for the kind of in invasion that would actually threaten me where I am at. I'm not actually directly in Kiev. I'm a little bit outside the city and I'm more to the west. And this gives me a huge advantage. If there were something that would go down very suddenly, I'd be able to grab my go bag, grab my dog and cat and go west very quickly. I could get out ahead of everybody. So this is kind of like a urgent plan. If like the unimaginable happened overnight, which is just, it's very, very unlikely that that's going to happen. And uh, I think more likely if they were going to actually ramp up for a 
full-scale invasion, we would be seeing the military personnel movement closer to the border, which we have not seen that. That would take a few days at least. So I'm keeping a very close eye on the situation. I don't want people to freak out about this or lose your head or be panic because this is not helpful to anybody. Okay. Strategic location. <laughs> yes. I'm at a strategic location. That's right. Uh, so, the other article that I wanted to check. <laughs> Can't shake it off. <laughs> the question is, uh, what is the enrage timer on Russia? That's the question that I'm wondering right now. Okay, so. Let's see. Here's the other article. I did not even know that this one was coming out. They did not talk to me about it. I have no idea what's in this interview. I mean, it's not an interview because I wasn't in it, but this article. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've actually had several Bun Buns who happen to be uh, ex-vets who have reached out to me about the situation and are in close contact with me about the situation, like analyzing it from the perspective of someone that has knowledge on this kinds of situations to sort of advise me on what the threat level actually is at this current moment. They're not gonna invade tomorrow. I still have some time. Okay. Anyway, here's our PC Gamer uh, article. One of the Final Fantasy XIV's prominent streamers has spoken about her plans to flee Ukraine in a wake of a potential invasion from Russia. Potential invasion. She's from Louisiana. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to reread the stuff that we already read in the other. She's a wonderfully wholesome content creator. <laughs> Am I wholesome? Okay. I'm not a toxic streamer. Am I... Am I wholesome or am I toxic? Like, what percentage of wholesome and what percentage of toxic? <laughs> it depends. It depends on the situation. We just finished raiding. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. You just, <laughs> just finished raiding, so I'm surprised. Wait till, wait, wait, wait till P4S tomorrow before you start saying this. Wait till, wait till P4S. Okay, so <laughs> usually providing tips for newer players or gushing about her love for Viera. By the end of January, saw her tackle a much more serious topic, the impending danger for those living in Kiev and the fact that she would likely need to leave very soon. There may come a day soon when I may need to reach out to the community for help. This is still true. She addressed her viewers during one of her regular streams. She went into details about the increasing number of Russian troops along the Ukrainian border, the increasing tensions between the two countries. And by the way, uh, I have seen some people try to come out and defend Russia saying that Russia is increasing tensions. It's uh, it's not Russia that's increasing tensions. It's everybody else that's increasing tensions. And this is really frustrating for me when Russia invaded eight years ago. Like we've been dealing with war with Russia for eight years already here. So I would say that's probably done a little bit to increase tensions. Like why do you ask some of the millions of people that had to flee their homes in Donbass who's increasing tensions? She's been making preparations to leave, though it's not as easy as upping sticks back to America. I've never heard that phrase before. I have a home here. I have my dog, Nora. My cat, Tallulah. She's currently in the process of abandoning... Abandoning? Obtaining? Obtaining pet passports for both, though it's a little tricky trying to get pets from Ukraine into the U.S. Ukraine is considered a high-risk rabies country for dogs. This means that there's a lot of extra paperwork I need to do. And there's a very specific timeline that must be done to get... Yeah, this is the thing that I'm waiting on. This has been the, the biggest pain in the ass, getting these pet passports. And uh, they're supposed to be done by the end of the week, but it's not certain. And, and it, even if they were, I have to wait for Tallulah to get better because she's sick. She has a super bad fever right now. I already said that before, but I'm just re reiterating it. Uh, following the stream, Zeppla spoke to Vice and said how the normalcy around everything has been the most unsettling thing. Yeah, and they, they mentioned what I said about the, the hurricane, and that's so true, it really is. Um, I've been through a lot of hurricanes in my life, having come from Louisiana, and uh, you can feel, yeah, you really can feel it in the air that the big storm is coming, like the air, it just smells different, it feels different, and 
everybody is lining up at the gas station to fill their vehicles up with as gas and filling up the gas canisters and like all the food and uh, water bottles start to go off the shelves and uh, you decide like you, you're watching the trajectory trajectory of the storm on the news and it all feels like there's a real certainty to it like we need to prepare for a disaster but um we know we have a general idea of where it's coming from we know that it is coming there's a good chance we'll at least get some rain but here uh this is like completely um it feels like a lot of the same preparations have to be made with way less of the certainty right now as i said that her plan is to pack up and head west once she has her pet passports to hand yeah uh this is what i'm gonna have to do no matter what most likely she uh got her like yeah anyway she got her covid booster jab last week so i won't get plague while i flee the war <laughs> i mean it's true yeah i, I said that. that that was a funny thing i said haha ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so uh yeah i got it um and everything's fine so far War is outdated and immature. It is. It it does feel like that to me. For me, like, all I want to do is play Final Fantasy. I literally just want to sit here and play Final Fantasy. Why, in an era in which Endwalker exists, would any person want to do something that would take so much of their time that should be spent playing Final Fantasy? actually said uh in the vice article they didn't quote me but i was like maybe we should just send the free trial to putin so he will have something to do because like make him play from realm reborn to n walker <laughs> the goal is clear introduce putin to ffxiv <laughs> do you think he would just boost though uh why is your chat spreading so much fear today? I live in Kiev and the difference in reality is really terrifying from what people are spamming here. Thank you for saying that uh, because that's something I've been trying to <sighs> emphasize with everybody here today. Yes, yes, just so. Uh, this is completely, this is completely right. The difference in reality here is really different from the panic and fear and hysteria that I'm seeing from people that are well-meaning. These are people that, uh, like, I realize that you're concerned about me and you're seeing a lot of really concerning headlines, but the reality in Kiev is that everybody's going about life. Everybody's going about their business. Um, like, I just got my hair done yesterday. Nobody seemed worried about the situation. Nobody seems stressed out about it. Um, Yes, people are like taking some intelligent precautions and they're staying aware of the latest news, but people are not losing their minds about it. And I really, I don't know how to explain to you that uh, panicking is not the thing to do now. It is not the time to panic. It's not time to do that. I, I really, I want to calm y'all down, uh, but I realize how difficult that is when in some countries, like in America, uh, it's like the news cycle is nothing but war is happening now, war is happening tomorrow, they are going to get bombed right now, they're going to get bombed overnight. Like, that's what's happening, and uh, I mean, that's what's happening on the news, and it's so different from the reality here. Like, I have fr a friend, actually, who's uh, going to university here in Kiev, and they're not canceling any classes. They haven't even talked about canceling any classes. She's just continuing doing her schoolwork and going to class. Everything's normal. Everything's Life continues as normal here. And uh, I think maybe if people saw that, they would be able to calm down more. Uh, but I, I have no way to show that to you. I can only tell you about it and hope that you believe me. The U.S. media is kind of milking it, and it kind of it has made me feel a little bit uncomfortable with the level of hype and hysteria that, hysteria that has been built up around it. At the same time, it's stupid to ignore a potential threat, but we got to keep our heads here. We can't lose our heads in this. And um, I guess it's just it, there's a, a bit of nuance to the situation that is hard to describe. A news program that's like World, World War Three is imminent. 
the bombs could be dropping tomorrow. Did you remember Russia has nukes? Oh my God. Like more people will watch that and watch the ads, obviously, than if, it, if, the, if the headline was just like, oh, there is a potential threat that Russia, like th Russia is threatening Ukraine right now. We're gonna keep an eye on it. Like that's way less. That's most people will just like fall asleep, and not not continue watching that. Um, so they're trying to get people to watch their ads and click on the articles so they can get the ads and the click throughs and all this stuff. So, hey, I'm the girl who wrote the PC Gamer article. I've sent you a Twitter DM if you have ever time to read it. Can only apologize if it came across as sensationalized. I don't think that the Vice article or the PC Gamer article were sensationalized. Uh, they seemed quite fair. These, both of these articles seemed really fair. But what I was, I, I realized like, I started talking about sensationalism in media around the same time that I was talking about the uh, articles. So I realized how that could have gotten like muddied. But mostly I was talking about not, I was mostly talking about like the news, like the televised news that my parents are watching right now in the US. That is uh, really, really, really driving my parents crazy right now. And they're freaking out. So no, I don't think that the article is sensationalized. Usually if people can take the time to read a whole article, um, they tend to be more calm about a situation than if they're just watching the TV and like freaking out about everything they've seen on the TV. People have to understand Ukraine has been in a state of war for eight years and regular people haven't been affected by that. Yes. As a Ukrainian, I feel like full on war is unlikely and regular people being in danger is even more unlikely. Thank you, thank you. There's no reason to panic. That being said, listening to what your embassy says is generally a good idea. I completely agree. I completely agree. That is the rational perspective on this. And uh, I am trying to take the advice of the embassy, but uh, they are not really offering me any help in terms of like making exceptions to rules regarding my pets and things. So I really hope that what you can take away from this is that uh, we're not gonna have a war tomorrow. Everything's fine. I'm safe right now. Okay, I'm fine. And if anything, any if there's any major development, I will let you know immediately on Twitter or on Discord. Like you will know a, as soon as I possibly can get that information out. So I'm, like I said, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna stop streaming throughout this. It's been very heartwarming for me to see all of the compassion that's come out of this community. Like that's been something that has been, uh, it's been really sweet. That's what I can say. So thank y'all for that.